G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists do what they do. Okay, folks, welcome back to Colour in Your Life. Well, we are in a beautiful area called Mount Monganui in the Bay of Plenty and the North Island of New Zealand. And the beaches out here are spectacular, some of the most beautiful in the world. I mean, we're literally right on the beach at the moment. And we're at the studio of an amazing artist, Mr. Robert McGregor. Welcome to the show, Rob. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> Great Ryan. to have you here. Welcome to be here. I mean, welcome to here. <laughs> Thank you very much. This man's amazing. He does so many other things apart from your art, which you're incredibly well known for. But you're also a master's athlete as well. You're one of the best athletes in the country for your age. We won't tell his age, but it'll <laughs> blow you away anyway. Um, plus, you've also been an art advisor, art consultant. You've been a judge for a lot of the National Art Prizes as well. You're a really interesting guy. There's no oh, two ways about you. it. Tell me a little bit about your history. I mean, there's, you've done so much. I started off as a teacher, taught uh, art, of course, along with science and maths and everything else. And uh, then I became a specialist in that area and became a, a teacher of art, basically. And so I was an art teacher in an intermediate school. Uh, then I became an advisor to teachers, so I helped them running their art programs within the classrooms yeah. by running courses for teachers and writing material. And I've moved on from there to becoming a uh, full-time artist. And the area that Rob lives in is just magnificent. I mean, you look out of his studio window and you look across at the panorama. Rob's actually going to paint, uh, obviously, some of the things that you're passionate about, which is the area that you live in for a start. And you're going to paint one of the trails around Mount Monganui um, for the audience today. Really spectacular colours that you'll see in Rob's work. They're, they're bright, they're entertaining. Now, one of the words that you actually use as far as uh, your philosophy in life is the word play. It is indeed, yeah. yes. I didn't know you picked up on that, yeah. but uh, I think play is probably the most important thing we do, <laughs> quite yeah. honestly. Um, you know, if we uh, think of the things we have to do, yeah. uh, like our job and so on, all very well, but really when we've got spare time, we want to play. I, I mean, you might call fishing play, but yeah. what we do in our spare time to me is the most valuable. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we're going to do a little bit of playing today with some colour, and you're going to see a wonderful, wonderful piece come out with under the uh, instruction of Rob. Okay. Let's go for it. Thank you. Okay, Rob, well, I can already see that you've drawn uh, the piece out, and we were talking before about the golden mean, and you actually nice. put the golden mean into a lot of your work. Yes, I, um, I do. When I compose my piece of work, I decide on a centre of interest or somewhere where I want to lead the people's eyes, so, uh, or the viewer. Um, we all know about dividing in thirds like this and finding one of those points, and that is good. However, I find that I like it a little bit different from a third. 24 inches across here, yep. um, I multiply that by 0.618 and that gives me 14 and a little bit there. So this is where my 14 and a bit. About here's where my centre of interest will be and I'll do the same up here, so that's 7 and 3 eighths approximately. So it's about here. So I'm going to try and lead people's eyes into this sex mm -hmm. uh, idea. So I've drawn this track here, which you probably can't see, and uh, that will lead, hopefully, your eyes into the uh, main part of my painting. Fantastic. So first of all, I'll sort of outline this. And obviously the area that you live in, which is a really beautiful area, 
influences a lot of the work you do. It does indeed, yeah. yes. And uh, th th this could be a track anywhere in the world, obviously, yeah. but uh, it's a track that I've run around many, many times. I sort of, uh, I've done a lot of running, uh, well over 100,000 k's over the years, and this is one of my regular places to, to run. It's amazing that your athletics and your art, I mean, you're outdoors so much anyway, so you're the inspiration of the area. <laughs> obviously comes through in a lot of things you do. Yes, I suppose that's true. And all you're doing is using the blue to, to outline, make it a little bit bolder than what it is. Yeah, I can of course make all this disappear, this blue if I want. Yeah. And quite often I'll sort of leave the outline as well because I sort of like it. Over the years you've actually had some quite influential people influence your work or teach you as well. And one of those was, was Dame Doreen Bloomhart. That's right. When I went through uh, Teachers College, I specialised in art and Dorian Bootpap was one of my tutors and she was uh, very well known, became very well known in pottery. So Paul Olds? Uh, yeah, Paul Olds was also down there. He was yeah. a painter. Yep. He died quite young. I remember a thing about Paul and I'm not sure if it was his talking to me or someone else. Uh, and the person, and I'll say it wasn't me because that feels better, um, brought the painting up to him and said, um, have a look and Paul had a look at it and he's put it on the floor, put his foot on it, screwed it around like that and said uh, now carry on. And uh, <laughs> that kind of was a lesson that I learned not, and it's uh, still fixed me. Another thing, he sent us out into the bush to do some paint and drawing and I came back with my drawing and he got it like that and uh, I was about to start working on it and he turned it upside down and said yeah, away you go. Uh, so he immediately made me start thinking differently about things, you know, don't get precious Outside about the box, it, yeah, yeah. and look at things from a different point of view. Absolutely, yeah, that's fantastic. I'm using the primaries, and in this case my primary here is turquoise, Yep. Uh, and I use the magenta as my red, mm -hmm. and uh, the yellow, Okay. a mid sort of yellow, so I'm going to block this in, these will become t sort of trees later on. Your work's been produced in limited editions as well, and you've literally sold thousands and thousands of these images of yes. New Zealand to people from all over the world. Yeah, I've been very fortunate with my prints and uh, uh, reproductions of my work. I think, you know, people relate to things maybe on colour, mm -hmm. but they also, I think, relate to associations with something they experienced. Yes. A and uh, even though everyone's experiences are different, there are some experiences which people feel that must be similar to mine. <laughs> Yeah. But then again, say I were to do some flowers, uh, and their experience might be very, they, they have their garden and mm -hmm. they uh, work away uh, growing their flowers and putting them in vases and maybe even selling them. And so their experience with flowers is different from you who've just been to a funeral of someone you loved and uh, the flowers uh, remind you of the funeral. They represent something else. Yeah, and so even though you could have the same image, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the same uh, feelings that you might get from yeah. from that. It's the experiences that go with it. This is a, a, a liquid medium. So what sort of medium is it? Oh, it's a binder. It's, yeah, it is. A, it's a binder. I, oh. I kind of think of all the mediums as being the same. I know people who sell them wouldn't like that. Yeah. I, I think they're all interchangeable. Yep. They're just a sort of stuff that glues the paint. Because basically, uh, an acrylic paint is a pigment, a yep. colour, and then it's just uh, something that glues it to your surface, and yeah. that's what this is. And it can be thick, or it can be thin, or it can yeah. Be, uh, yeah. So basically, I believe them to be pretty well interchangeable. Sure. And the one thing that's very distinctive about your painting is that they are colourful. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> I must like colour quite it. a bit. <laughs> I do tend to like colour. <laughs> and um, my sort of basic philosophy, I often say, can be summed up pretty well in something that Giacometti said. He said the um, purpose of, of painting or purpose of, it, purpose of art is not to reproduce a reality, produce a, a new reality. It's not a picture of the track, it's yeah. not a photograph, it's a reality that you produce and it should stand on its own. Yes. Here's a painting and uh, you, you either feel something for that painting or you don't. Yes. And really it is, um, it's nothing to do with the source that I started with. In this case, I've started with the track as the source, but it's for me to be able to put in plenty of colour and things and, and, and lead you to look at and enjoy, and for me to enjoy doing, basically. Yes. It's more important that I enjoy doing it than you might enjoy looking at it. And the, the other thing is, too, I don't preconceive it so I know what it's going to look like. Yeah. Because after a while, it sounds very corny, 
but um, the painting does start to tell you what's necessary next. It, it, you think, oh, well that sounds very arty, doesn't it? But really, um, as you work, uh, your painting says, oh, it needs a bit more yellow down here, or I need a bit more red down here, or I need more weight over here. And so the painting does, and when you get to that stage, then you feel um, you're in the zone, some people might say. And uh, that's what happens. And uh, it, I think it happens in most activities in life that you get really involved in. Yeah. Basically I'm blocking it all in now and my task here is to cover all my painting uh, so there's no white actually showing. I'll put the white on, if I want white I'll paint it white. So you're taking some of these things straight out of the tube? Yeah it saves putting it on there and wasting yeah. it all. And the other thing is that if I've got some paint over I'll put it somewhere else. Now this particular piece that we've seen today is really just part of the overall teaching that you do at your um, your retreat. You and your darling wife Joanne have enjoyed a very adventurous life with each other. You've travelled all over the world painting and taking people with you to do these uh, these art retreats which is just, just amazing. Well a retreat you have to get away from everything so no TV, no newspapers, all you can do is paint and socialise, drink a wine and yeah. eat a lot. And you take people out to these magnificent areas of New Zealand where there's waterfalls and there's streams uh, the accommodation's fantastic. Beautiful bush. Yeah, yes. the food's fantastic. The food is brilliant. The the uh, accommodation, I think, is wonderful. But uh, I think that's a great idea for people to get in touch with you at your website. Actually, what is your website? It's all one word, Rob McGregor, lowercase, dash art, dot Rob, com. Rob McGregor, dash, dash art, dash art dot com. com. Okay. It's a great, great way to have a holiday. It is indeed. You've got a picture called After Renoir, which is actually uh, yes. a, a representation yes. of the luncheon of the boating party by, by Renoir. But yours, yeah. yours has got more of a, a psychological twist to it. Yes. Can you explain that to me? Everywhere I went, there were people uh, using cell phones. And mm -hmm. I'd see three teenagers walking down the road all on cell phones. And uh, you, you know, I'd go to a cafe and there's people having a little, uh, apparently having a coffee together. but they're actually on their phones or and nobody was communicating anymore and I thought this is a sad thing so I'm just like to bring people's attention to it so I made a little exhibition of about 10 paintings called the fine art of conversation yes and uh, there wasn't any conversation in any of the paintings of course what I'll do now is put all the foliage in foliage, and so yep. just show you the method that I sometimes use and, okay. if, uh, and intend to use today sure I'll just put this out of the road and bring this down I'm just going to put a few blobs of paint on. Oh goodness! About where I want the foliage. Yeah. And it's red foliage. Well, of course, of course. Oh. Yes, I want it fairly it? realistic in this case. Yeah. So, this is a binder, and it's because what I'm doing now is spraying it. Yeah. Ooh. <clears throat> now, if I make the paint too weak by watering it down too much, yeah, it loses its adhesion, because as I said before, this is really just pigment with a binder or something to hold it, to glue mm -hmm. it. Now if I water it down too much, like maybe three times as much, then I'm worried that I'll lose some of the adhesion and I don't want that happening. Yeah. Now I'll get a bit of plastic or anything that I've got lying around. That'll do. Yeah. And I can just spread it a bit then I get it out to the sides and just push it where I want it. Goodness. And I can leave some of those are uh, fairly loose at the ends and they, uh, they kind of get, I don't know, they, look, got, through, they yeah. look quite good to me. And um, I want a few dark areas in because they'll be the shadows later on. I'll just put a few blues, oh that's quite thick. I'll just get a little bit here and there. Yeah. It's much thicker than I wanted. I'll spread those around as well. This just gives a more loose effect than a painting with a brush. Yep. And so it just enables me to sort of to be a bit kind of random. Right, okay, so I now need to dry that, so I'll get the hair dryer onto it after I've washed my hands. Excellent, okay. Right, it's not quite dry, but I'm going to start on the uh, track itself now and start bringing some different colours into here. Beautiful. I know that you are au fait with all the mediums, but what draws you to acrylics most of all? The fact that you can, uh, it, is fairly instantaneous. I like to move quickly. I don't like to hang around and uh, wait for things to dry. Yeah. I can make as many changes as I like with watercolour. Once it's done, mm -hmm. it's done, sort of, so to speak. 
again this in a sense is just another blocking in sense and I'm keeping in mind that I'm going to have shadows here which is going to make the path more interesting than it is at the present time. Yep. There's some other pictures I'd like to screen up, uh, one called Combi which I think is great. I mean a lot of the stuff that you do has got the old cars in it, the old vans and also putting around which is a great picture. Oh, yes. Um, both those were commissions yeah. and I quite often do commissions for people who want something special just for them. Part of your resume with your work is that you do do a lot of commissions as well, don't you? Yes, I like commissions actually because they uh, are not something that I'd necessarily paint myself. Yep. Um, and I've done historical uh, paintings like um, a family home from whence the people came in Scotland from yeah. their ancestors and uh, other family homes that have remained their homesteads for generations over in the uh, country. Yeah. Uh, this type of thing I find really interesting. That's fantastic. I mean some of your other work like barbecue beetles which I think is really cool. It's a red VW. Well I had a, a red VW as a young <laughs> I had a red VW as one of the like, like early I, cars. So I think VWs were pretty popular in your painting somehow. Yeah well <laughs> they were quite good years. Yeah. <laughs> and there's another one that you've done I really like which is called Macro Carpa. Yeah Macro Carpa is one of our trees. I like the shapes of it and so on and uh, that's no doubt why I decided to do that. That's a fantastic piece that one really. Oh. Yes. Oh, thank you. Whenever I put a colour in, <clears throat> I make sure I repeat it. I usually change it a bit when I repeat it, so it's not really boring, you know. So, yeah. so I'll add more something into it, some other colour. With greens, I, I think I tend to add a bit of red into them quite often to subdue them a little bit. I've noticed today that you don't have any visual references. This all comes out of your head. Well, I've. I've run around here a few times, but the important thing about something like this is that it doesn't have to be the exact place. Yeah, but you've done a whole series called the Track Series. A favourite spot of mine, yeah. I must admit. Right, I think I shall put a few shadows in now. I'm going to uh, use purple. The shadows are going to come up here somewhere, and then I'll just have them sort of uh, coming down in this kind of stuff, all, you know, just random. So yeah. Purple shadows with um, yellow ground, like working those complementaries beautifully. Yes, yeah, so, well, uh, that's true, and I'll ex explain a little bit about complementaries for anybody who's not too sure what a complementary might be. Please do. I, I think of the, you're having uh, three major colours, really, uh, as, as we do, the uh, red, yellow and blue, and we make all our other colours from that, with perhaps the addition of white, to make the tints. When you add white, it's called a tint, add black, it's called a shade. Um, okay, so if you have any one of those colours, the mixture of the other two is it's complementary. So yeah. if I want the complementary to blue, it's the other two. If I want the complementary to yellow, it's a mixture of those two. Complementary of that, those two. And of course if I have green, that comes in between here, red. There you go. Alright, so it's just those bit triad that tells you all about your, your complementary. Now complementaries really make your catch your eyes. And so using them quite a bit it makes paintings jump and, and not everyone wants the painting jump because you might want a very restful peaceful sort of painting in which case you may use all harmonious colours all much the same blues mm -hmm. and greens and whites and stuff nothing standing out because you want a restful sort of painting but if you want a, a more vibrant sort of thing then having complementaries and strong contrasts of dark and light uh, help quite a lot and so I tend to work a bit that way. Right I've just mixed up a sort of turquoise here bit of blue bit of yellow plenty of white and I'm going to I uh, use uh, a painting knife now instead of a brush because I want a sort of slightly random texture on these sort of parts mm -hmm. and um, I'll just see how the paint just goes on how it wants more than how I control it. Where I've got the dark areas and behind they now become the shadows and things like that and so I also need to repeat I'll put more of this uh, maybe out about as far as that and while I'm at it I'm will need to put some over this side to balance and uh, I've started this as a kind of turquoisey hill here, so I'll probably put some there, maybe a bit more later on. But many of the paintings that I do tend to be seaside or related to the water. Mm -hmm. Over the years I've done um, quite a lot with yachts and so on. There was one that you did of a lass, yes. uh, the picture's called Scala. There was a, she was a champion rower as well, wasn't she? Yeah, uh, that was a nice painting of uh, a girl who went to the world champs as a Scala so many years ago. That was a commission that parents asked me to paint it for her, it was for a present for her when she was going to the worlds. That was very nice. Fantastic. Yeah. So what I'm doing here, by painting the negatives, I'm actually sh shaping up the positives that I want. Yep. 
and now that I've got a colour there that's better I can sort of start putting it in other places a little bit and maybe show it up on some of the trees and a bit of the light here and there. One of my main points is going to be a little tree here. I'll have a couple of figures here I think but whenever you put people into a painting your eyes can't help but go to it. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't matter if I had someone sitting on a rock down here. Yeah. First thing, your eyes would always go to it. But I want people's eyes to actually go to here. Yeah. That's my centre of interest. We worked that out before. And so we'll have some little figures down here to catch our attention and the light above it will be um, quite strong. I think I'll try and put some little branches in there. So I'll use a finer. This little rigger uh, is quite nice for the dark sort of stuff. So I'll go to my dark colour, which is in this case purple. These Bahutakawa have very twisty sort of uh, branches. And at um, Christmas time, December, January, it bursts into brilliant red flower. Uh, and I've had Australian people who bought them, they call it um, their flame trees. Oh, so, yeah, so, so it's yeah. known as. Uh, by some Australians as flame trees, but okay. we New Zealanders as Pahuta okay. so. While I've got this dark colour mixed up, I'll just put some people. As I said, if you have people into a, in a painting, mm -hmm. your eyes can't help but go to it. It's just the way it is. So we'll have a little couple here walking around the mount. Okay. okay, viewers, a fantastic day, Rob. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. As you can see, the finished piece, and it looks fantastic. Now, you'd put a, a cover over this, wouldn't you? I'd just protect it with a clear acrylic, just yeah. the medium without any pigment on it. Um, a couple of coats, and it protects it. Yeah. It's fantastic. And that enables you to go back in and rechange it again when I you can, need to. I can, because acrylic goes on acrylic. Yeah. Fantastic <laughs> stuff. Now, your website is, yeah. again? Rob McGregor, all one word, yeah. dash art. Dot com. Okay, and if you want to go and see more of Rob's work, come in there. He's got a really fantastic, diverse, very eclectic style of work, which is just wonderful. And also, I would really highly recommend, I mean, you live in a beautiful area of New Zealand, yeah. the, the Bay of Plenty, it's just a fantastic place. All the islands, you can see the islands from his front deck, my goodness. But to go to the retreats and go up in the mountains, the waterfalls, the people, the music, the food, the yeah. wine, really, really entertaining and just have a fantastic time with these yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think yeah. they highly recommend that. Um, also, come to colourinyourlife.com.au, of course. Uh, we've got plenty of DVDs out to, to these days as well, so come in and grab some of those. There's some fantastic stuff and some great education to be had for the whole family. And also, come and see us on Facebook and on our YouTube channel as well. We've got tens of thousands of people in these days subscribing to what we're doing. It's just really fantastic. Uh, we're going to continue on our journey around the Bay of Plenty. Great people, wonderful place, wonderful people. But until we meet again, remember guys, make sure you put some colour in your life. And we'll see you then. Bye now. <laughs> <laughs>